So welcome everyone to the third annual Center for Clinical and Translational Sciences annual scientific meeting. Uh, today we're going to have a uh, discussion on the integration of omics and clinical and translational research. Uh, I am going to be your moderator for the talks this morning and this afternoon. My name is Mike Freitas. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Molecular Virology, Immunology, and Medical Genetics here at Ohio State. Uh, just as a quick overview, I want to uh, point out the list of distinguished speakers we have today. We're very fortunate to have a very high quality panel of, of individuals to come and talk about uh, the uh, value of omics, as, as particularly in the context of translational research. I also want to uh, direct you to the lunch and meet the professor workshops that will be taking place at noon today. Uh, where we're going to be going over uh, uh, technology and innovation, the, uh, uh, a little bit of an overview of computational and high throughput, uh, th high throughput techniques, and small molecule epigenetic modulation. And then finally, do not miss our poster session. We have 26 posters from our students, our trainees. Uh, it will be an excellent forum for them to present their work and have an opportunity to network and practice their skills. So please do come join us for some uh, scientific, stimulating scientific discussion and also to meet our, our young scientists. So just very quickly, um, I, I tried to think of a good way to define omics, and it's a very difficult term to define because the uh, etymology of it's somewhat uh, mysterious, but I thought it might be better just to point out some uh, small sampling of what omics are. We often think of omics in the context of the quote-unquote central dogma of biology, which is genes transcribe RNA, which translates to protein. So we have genomics, transcriptomics, proteomics. We know that that is not the complete picture. In fact, if you just look at genomics, you have functional genomics, comparative genomics, spliceomics, exomics, etc. And in the field of proteomics, that crosses over into epigenomics and immunoproteomics. So really, the, the, when we talk about omic sciences, we're talking about technologies that have enabled us to look at molecular profiles that make up a cell. One way to think about this is if you tried to estimate what's the information content within a cell. In a bacterial cell, this has been estimated to be something to 10 to the 12th bits of information. And omic technologies are striving to define that in ways that we can understand in the context of biologically relevant molecules. Now, what I haven't put up here is probably one of the greatest challenges that we still face we're getting very good at, at uh, reading these molecu this molecular information, but we still face the challenge of how do we integrate it? How do we make it meaningful? How do we, make, how do we reduce it down to things that are going to be valuable in translational research? And so that's one of the things we're going to try to talk about today and try to introduce the, uh, uh, our audience to is how can we see value from omics sciences? And I just put up four very brief bullet points here, which are no way in com uh, uh, comprehensively cover the value of omics technologies in, uh, in translational research. But these are a couple things that I think where we can have a pretty tremendous impact. Of course, we always think about biomarker discovery, which is a very important thing. It helps us to uh, potentially stratify patients, uh, may also be able to predict disease. Uh, help us to diagnose and uh, improve prognosis. But we also can use omics technologies to better understand disease mechanisms, which leads us to development of new targeted therapies. And as, a, as another benefit, as the better we understand the molecular nature of diseases, we can better utilize existing therapies that are on the market. So I, again, I welcome everybody. I think we have a very exciting program today. I just want to very quickly thank all the all, everybody that was involved, especially uh, uh, Becky and Philip, uh, who this meeting is really their vision. Also, the organizing committee, which is uh, uh, composed of Valerie DeGroff, Kuhn Wong, Randy Nelson, Sashwati Roy, and myself. And I have Valerie's name underlined here. I don't know. Are you here, Valerie? 
She's probably outside still working. Oh no, she's in the back. So everybody, I just, as a show of my appreciation, I'd like to give Valerie a hand. Because without her, this would have been very stressful for me and she's made my life very easy. And of course, I wanna thank our speakers, our panelists, and all the volunteers and staff that have made this meeting uh, possible today. I'm gonna to hand over the proceedings now to Becky Jackson, who is going to talk about the CTSA. Well, good morning. Come on, you gotta say good morning back. And I too would like to welcome all of you to the third annual um, Center for Clinical and Translational Science um, scientific meeting. And, and I also would like to give that, that note of thanks actually to, to Mike and the planning committee um, for putting together what I think is an incredibly exciting um, meeting that I think will stimulate all of us to think a little bit differently and to really, um, I think, embed this within our science. You know, four years ago when the um, Ohio State received the CTSA award, um, one of my second slide in, in talking to people about what the vision was of the clinical and translational um, science is here at Ohio State was really a, a quote from Gordon Gee in his first time through Ohio State University. And that quote really discussed the fact that we have a sacred social compact um, to take the discoveries that we make on a daily basis across this university and actually translate that for the betterment of the citizens, not only of the state of Ohio, but in fact to, to the citizens across the world. And I think that, that as we go through today and as we look at some of this discovery um, that's been made broadly across not only genomics and proteomics and metabolomics, um, but across this kind of wide spectrum of discovery science that many of us are engaged in, um, I think that really we should embrace the challenge, which is to work collaboratively across disciplines and across areas so that we can take this scientific data that we're beginning to accumulate and actually bring that reality to fruition um, by improving the care of the patients that we take care of across the health sciences colleges, whether it be in the College of Medicine, in veterinary medicine, in optometry, dentistry, or in fact in public health um, to improve the citizens worldwide. Um, I hope you also take an opportunity today to actually talk to people that are well outside your discipline. We have incredible speakers here, so pick their brains. Think about ways that you might be able um, to develop new collaborations because, in fact, that's really also at the central core of the CTSA. Um, many of you may not know, but currently there's almost 1,150 members um, of the Center of Clinical Translational Science here at Ohio State University. And over the past four years, actually those members who have worked with resources that we provided with some of the infrastructure here to help you be more effective at bringing your creativity um, to actually um, a, a vision and then a reality um, have resulted in over 400 to 500 papers in journals that range from not only JAM and the New England Journal, but Cell, Nature Genetics, and others. So I challenge all of you to continue to work together collaboratively, reach out, um, take a chance, and really take your creativity and make that innovation that makes a change for tomorrow. I'm gonna turn it back over to Mike, and again, I welcome all of you. Um, we're really pleased to have you. There's more than 300 of you who are gonna wander in and out of here today. Um, and I'm gonna turn it over to Mike to be able to introduce our first speaker.